The nucleic acids are a final type of biological molecule that we need to review. And nucleic acids include DNA and RNA. That's it, just those two molecules. So DNA, of course, is what encodes all of our genetic information. RNA is something that acts kind of like an interface between DNA and the rest of the cell. So RNA is the molecule that carries um, the message encoded in DNA, carries it out to a ribosome in the cytoplasm of the cell. We'll be reviewing this in the next chapter when we talk about cells in more detail. Uh, nucleic acids, their structure consists of nucleotides that can be attached together. So this is one nucleotide right here. It has a five carbon sugar, it has a phosphate group, and then it has a nitrogen base. And that nitrogen base, that's the thing that we like to refer to with a letter. It's either an A, a T, a G, or a C, if we're talking about DNA. The bases are capable of forming hydrogen bonds with each other. So let's jump down to this schematic here. Here we have one DNA strand, and over on this side, we have its complementary sequence. Okay, so two DNA strands, and they are bonding to each other via hydrogen bonds between those bases. So the base pairing rules, cytosine, or C, likes to base pair with guanine, or G. And that particular pairing is capable of forming three hydrogen bonds. That's why there are three dashed lines shown right here. Okay, so that's relatively strong. Um, we've got three hydrogen bonds holding it together. Let's jump down to this one. Okay, the other pair that we could have is a T, a thymine, paired with adenine, or A. So that type of um, attraction between an A and a T, this is only capable of forming two hydrogen bonds. So that's a little bit weaker. Um, and there are some interesting consequences of that when it comes to DNA replication and just um, expression of genes that are encoded in DNA. A lot of times the expression starts at an AT rich region because it's a little bit easier to pull those strands apart at that location. Okay, so definitely know the base pairing rules, definitely know the four bases that are in DNA. And then the other thing that you need to know is what's the difference between DNA and RNA? So how does RNA differ from DNA? RNA has a different sugar than DNA. It is a ribose sugar instead of a deoxyribose. And if we jump over here to the structure and just look literally what is the difference, these sugars look exactly the same except for one thing. At this location right here, deoxyribose is missing an oxygen. That's why it's called deoxyribose. Whereas this one has its oxygen. And so this structure, this sugar is just called ribose. So that's really the key difference in terms of the structure. Um, so a few other differences in terms of the molecule as a whole, RNA tends to be single-stranded, whereas DNA likes to be double-stranded. So RNA doesn't really form those hydrogen bonds that we were just talking about. And then the other key difference is the fact that RNA has a different base. Instead of thymine, it has uracil. So anywhere that there would have been a T, just remember it's substituted with a U in the case of RNA. RNA is very critical for allowing cells to make proteins. Um, so we'll be coming back to this again when we talk about cells. And then there are also gonna be some energy molecules, definitely ATP we'll be learning about. Um, this one is something that is related to RNA. Its structure is very similar to RNA. It is a, uh, essentially it is a nucleotide with adenine as its base.